What's up, everybody? It's your girl, B. Octavia. Welcome to or back to Be For Real podcast. Specifically right now, I am on serial killers. I've always wanted to know more about serial killers and why they chose to be that. You know, why they chose to kill people and the different behaviors and personalities of serial killers whether that be from interviews or from family members of these people i'm very intrigued to know so today i will be talking about jeffrey dahmer and jeffrey dahmer was born in 1960 and to everyone He is known as an American serial killer and a sex offender. Now, the span of his crimes were from 1978 to 1991. And I've seen a lot of different interviews that Jeffrey Dahmer did and the responses that he gave and how he responded to me was very nonchalant you know like none of it affected him even after you know him not being able to be in a inebriated state jeffrey dahmer was an alcoholic and a lot of people want to blame the alcohol for his crimes but i find it most interesting about him that if you're trying to use alcohol as a crutch to why he did these things, he still didn't care. You know, he still didn't care enough to shed a tear over his crimes. He didn't give any emotion towards talking about what he did. It was all said in a a matter of fact way. And um, that's without alcohol. So, you know, You always have to put in question if a person's mood changes after they can't get their hands on drugs or they can't get their hands on alcohol. You know, if their mood stays the same, you should really get away from people like that. People like that um, are very dangerous, you know. And I always say keep the same energy, and he definitely kept the same energy as far as his reaction, as far as his tone. And I'm sure, you know, during the trial that it was very hard for a lot of people to get through that. A lot of people don't realize how affected you can be by somebody else's mood and personality his in all honesty it would really get me mad you know it would really frustrate me to actually realize that a person like this has walked around for so long and people don't think about what he can be capable of you can never put and and a lot of people say it's because of his looks that that people um, didn't think much of him or that he wasn't capable of anything above the norm. And I really don't think so looking at him. You know, maybe that's because I've always been a skeptical person, but I I wouldn't attribute his looks to putting him putting anything past him, you know. And maybe me being a female, I wouldn't be a target or a victim. I thought about, I actually thought about that last night. And I thought some serial killers do change their victims and they they go from um, a knife to a gun or strangulation to this or, you know, their crimes vary but do their victims vary as far as female and male some of them yes but if he wasn't caught 
my question is, do you think that he would have ever switched up? Do you think that he would have ever switched how he did it? Do you think that he would have ever switched from male to female? Or did he view males as less than than females? Like, I have a lot of different questions. And none of those questions can be answered by Jeffrey Dahmer, of course, because on November 28th, 1994, he was bludgeoned to death. And the person that bludgeoned him was a part of the black community. He was an African-American male. And I believe he was already charged with life. Now, this person that killed Jeffrey Dahmer put it on Jeffrey Dahmer as it was his fault that he got killed. You know, it was his fault that he got attacked because I guess it was an incident of um, Jeffrey Dahmer and another male that was killed that same day were kind of snickering or laughing behind this inmate. With that being so, this inmate took that as disrespect. And once Jeffrey Dahmer and the other victim parted ways, Jeffrey got bludgeoned and the other person got bludgeoned right after. So I feel like even if it wasn't a snickering or anything, Jeffrey Dom, like the way that he walks around and the look on his face, like he, it's not like an innocent face, but it's just very blank. Um, the inmates knowing exactly what he did and he killed a lot of young black men. I feel like that on top of just his overall aura and personality being very bland, um, how people reacted in the courtroom, you know, everything was very public. And I think everything that I just said added up to him being murdered. You know, I feel like this inmate that killed him believed that he was taking one for the team and you know him already having life it's not more it's not any more that you can I mean it's more that you can get of course from killing people in prison but if you're already a lifer no it's not much um it's not much punishment left you know You'll do life, and then you'll die in prison. Well, actually, he was sentenced to 16 terms of life imprisonment. And I actually thought that he was going to be sentenced to death. Maybe they would have did that, you know, if he hadn't died in 1994. But I don't know. I thought that he was sentenced to death. But... Just as Ted Bundy did, you know, killed a lot of innocent young girls and young women. And just as a lot of American or not even American, you know, just serial killers did, um, they got executed. So I feel like that was an injustice, you know, and that might have been a factor in his death as well. You have to question that, you know, because... That really doesn't sit right with me looking at it. It doesn't sit right with me that he has the opportunity and the chance to be reformed or or to, you know, breathe. And he tortured, you know, and tricked a lot of desperate people. I feel like his victimology, you know, him picking victims that didn't have much that that came from low income areas and that that didn't have what he had growing up you know and i feel like a lot of that 
is money, you know, because his parents wasn't really around for him like that. After they got divorced, he was here and there, you know, and they was doing their thing, working and everything like this. But it's money. Um, he had a roof over his head. He had a warm house. He had food in the refrigerator. A lot of his victims, if not all of them, didn't have things like that. And he took advantage of that. I wish that he would have been caught sooner. And I honestly wish that right along with the other really huge serial killers, you know, especially Ted Bundy, like he got sentenced to execution, you know, to death. So what's really going on? That really could have been a huge factor, you know, and if y'all wanted to keep him alive, y'all as in the prison system or the police, whoever should have kept him safe. It's just as simple as that. Um, because I, I, I just, it doesn't sit right with me that it's so many terms of life imprisonment, you know, nah. Um, and he got to live two years after getting that 16th term of life imprisonment, you know. I bet that was a smack in the face to a lot of the victims' families. So if y'all wanted to use him as, you know, as far as getting answers out of him, which he didn't have a problem with, and for a long time, you know, for this lifetime, then y'all should have protected him enough. And that's really all I have to say about that. Um, it was a blessing. Um, I feel like people like him had to be born and they honestly had to do what they, what they did for them to be a huge example. You know, we had to have these things happen. And it was examples all the way around. It was examples of how the police don't do their job well enough. It was an example of how far a person would go and how low and how disgusting and grimy. It was an example of a lot of different things that I will get into in future episodes. Thank you for watching. Be For Real Podcast. It's your girl. Be Octavia, and I will see you guys in the next episode.